Hey, uh, all right, I think I'm streaming. Uh, this is fun. I've got my co-host Jaxie Cat here. Um, yeah, and uh, let me know in the chat if my audio levels are right and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I was thinking about playing with this um, Celtic knot work paper that I read um, that I read this weekend. And I know that I had previously recorded this um, this thing where I had like live created a um, a box generator in cuddle and people have told me that they found this, useful even though I was sort of bumbling through the whole thing. Um, people liked that I was bumbling through and like figuring it out as I went. So I figured I would record myself trying to make um, sort of the the algorithm that's discussed in this paper. And uh, since I'm recording it, I figured I might as well just do it live so that YouTube could be responsible for recording it. So Anyway, the um, I haven't done this before. Um, I mean, I haven't tried coding this before, so we'll see what happens. But the idea is that there's um, this tradition of Celtic knot work um, that makes these really cool, intricate woven patterns. And um, this guy, Andrew Glasner, um, has a bunch of really cool research papers on his website uh, that I discovered recently. And he has a whole series about these, um, these patterns and sort of the, I guess you could say the algorithms behind how they're, they're made. And I wanted to explore it by trying to code it in Cuddle. And it's gonna be mostly, or it's gonna be all code, like typing JavaScript code um, for this, uh, but might be fun. So basic overview, um, I'll paste the paper in the chat. Uh, basic overview is that to make this sort of the algorithm is, it's sort of on a grid and he starts with what he calls the primary grid, which are these dots here. And then there are, there's a secondary grid, which is at like the center point of the squares. And that's like this. And then he draws what he calls the tertiary grid, which is like sort of the primary grid divided in two. And then, um, then what happens? Um, a bunch of diagonal lines are made, and then he makes what he calls the skeleton. And then there's a way that the skeleton is broken up. Um, so if we go in, then the skeleton's sort of broken up here where there's like the weaving, the under over thing happening. And then the knot itself are derived from the skeleton and then that's sort of the final result and I am hoping to get to here um, in the next hour we'll see if I can go further than that but that's sort of my goal is just to get to here and then maybe in another session like get it all the way to here um, and so the other thing is, so this is what happens if you just sort of do a pure one, but then to create variations, he has these things called break lines, which basically takes where it would go over and under in this X pattern and a break line will like divert the, the I don't know, the ribbons um, like this or like this. And so an example is he has that same pattern, but there's now a break line here. And then that causes the skeleton to divert like this. And then uh, 
it makes this variation uh, as opposed to this one. So the break line is there and it causes the, the ribbons to divert. Uh, and then he has another example here where there are these break lines and then that goes like that. Um, yeah, so primary grid, secondary grid, these break lines, he draws the tertiary grid, um, makes the skeleton, and then this is how it's derived. So this paper is really good because there are a lot of diagrams. And I love um, research papers that have a ton of diagrams. Uh, so if you ever write a research paper, have diagrams like this. This is like really fantastically illustrated. Um, and it's fun for me to like understand, I guess, like a visual design by how it's made. Um, I used to love like drawing mazes as a kid. Um, I've never doodled these shapes before, so I'm not sure how far we'll be able to get, but I'm hoping I can figure this out. And so he actually talks about how he made this program in Visual Basic, and this is from 1999 and um, talks about how, um, how he did it. So it should be a pretty good sort of outline for me to try to live code this um, in Cuddle. And he talks about how the various um, curves that he draws are and gives some examples of uh, artwork that he's made using this. All right. So I'm going to start with a cuddle project, give it a title. This is all going to be a code component. A code component uh, is where you can type in JavaScript using our um, scripting API, which is all in here. I'll probably be referring to this as I do this. Um, so basically, we have all these sort of built-in things. You know, you can make a path or um, colors and all that stuff. And then you return some geometry, and then it gets drawn on the canvas. And then once you have a code component, you can use it um, like any of the other components. All right. Um, and these can have parameters. So the first parameter I'm going to have is my primary grid size. And I'm just going to do this as a, a vec, which has an x and a y. Um, and then I will do, let's draw the primary grid. Um, I'm going to do a for loop. And then another for loop in here. Um, so this will have x and y going. Uh, between 0 and 1 for x and 0 and 2 because it's less for um, y. And if we do console.geometry and have a vec here, then we can actually log all of the, the dots. Um, this is really hard to see. We need to make our console geometry dots easier to see, but they are actually here. Um, I see one there, there, and there. Um, I think what I'm going to do, since there's going to be so much like debugging geometry, I'm just going to make a place where I can be putting um, a bunch of geometry that I want to draw to the screen. And for each one of these, I'm going to draw a circle, I think. Um, this 
position will be x, y. And I'm going to push that circle to the output. OK, so what I did was I made an output array, and then I'm making a circle. This is just actually the same circle from here. You can call any shape. Um, so it makes a circle, and then I'm transforming it, and I'm positioning it and setting the scale smaller, because um, yeah, maybe even smaller than that. Um, I think I'm actually going to have a function that does this. Uh, given a position. Uh, um, I just want to pass in position there. OK, so I've just factored that out into its own function. All right, so there's going to be a primary grid. And I think, actually, I'm going to put these at the, because the primary grid is like, I'm going to have this be my unit. So these are going to be every two units. So. I'm going to multiply that by 2. So now I've got these here. And then I'm going to draw the secondary grid. The secondary grid, we can think of these. Oh, actually, should these be? We should have more, because um, my thing is 2 by 3. So this should go over by one more. So I've got um, these dots, the primary grid, like that. Uh, and that's looking more like what he's got here. I'm going to draw this secondary grid. These are essentially these ones moved over, like down by one. Um, so it's going to be something like this, but they're going to be one less. It's going to be this minus that, maybe plus. OK, so those are my primary points. Those are my secondary points. I wonder if I should color these. That might be nice. So there's going to be a color and uh, how do I make a st stroke color? I think something like that. We'll see if that works. Um, so then this will then pass in a color, and that's RGBA, and then this one will pass in a color, and I'll say maybe blue. Okay, that didn't work. Why isn't that not working? Um, C dot stroke, is that, maybe I have to do like set stroke or something. How do I give something a stroke? Uh, graphic dot. A sign stroke. Okay. Good. 
Okay, so that's the primary grid. That's the secondary grid. His are like sort of green. We'll go with that. Um, or like teal, maybe. That's fine. Okay, so I've got the primary grid, the secondary grid. I can change my size of the whole thing, but I'll start with a small one because that's sort of what he's doing. And then the next thing that I wanted to do was get these break lines. And let's see, so these break lines, he says, can connect either primary um, primary dots or secondary dots, and they're not allowed to overlap each other. And he always puts break lines around the boundary of the whole thing. And that sort of keeps the whole, the, the knot within the boundary. If you, if you don't have that, then it'll go outside, which is actually sort of what you want if you're making something that's like gonna be repeating and like tiling. Um, but anyway, here I'm thinking I need to have some sort of data structure that is going to be where these break lines are. And I was thinking about this and I think I want to make this, I think I'm going to try to do it as like a string. Uh, with like, um, like dashes and like ASCII art sort of. Um, and I, we'll see if this works, but um, I'm trying to like encode where the, Like this, this one I think is gonna to correspond to this and I can either have like a line going this way or a line going this way. And then this one's a line going this way or a line going this way. And then this is gonna to correspond to here and there's like a line going this way or a line going that way. Um, so there's like two places you could go there and then three places you could go here, and I'm just leaving out that middle one. If I wanted to put a line here, I could go like that, and then it would put a line here, or I could go like this, and it would put a line there. So that's the idea behind the data structure. And then here, these are like gonna be these, and they can either go vertically or horizontally. Um, and then these would be these ones. And then there's going to be another break for that. And then be something like this and then like that. And I think that would, that's going to try to correspond to this whole thing. So I don't know. We'll see sort of how that feels. Um, I don't know what these dots are. I don't... We'll see. <laughs> um, let's draw the break lines. Um, man, how to do this. So I guess there's going to be, we'll do it by line um, where these are like the lines. So actually let's, pre-process these break lines. Um, so 
So I'm going to split the break lines based on new line characters. And then let's see what that is. OK, so I've got sort of this kind of thing. Um, I want to remove these empty ones, um, but I want to still format it like this. Let's um, um, remove the first one. I think I can say that. OK, and then if this is a really hacky way to get rid of these, but uh, whatever. Lines dot pop. Nope. Lines dot length minus one. There we go. Okay, so just trying to get that processed. Um, and then, so I think it's, I think for each one, I'm going to try to find, I'm going I'm to make a loop and it's going to go from the top down. So Y is going to start at zero, then it's going to zero, one, two, three, four, five. Five, six. So y is less than or equal to what I call it primary grid size dot y. And then x is going to be, it's going to depend on whether it's even or odd, whether y is even or odd. Um, if it's even, then it'll be two, and if it's odd, it'll have three locations. I'm, I'm basically trying to get all of these grid points that are not, don't have circles on them. Uh, I think we should figure out how many. Um, How many to go? Um, so if y is even, if y is even, then the x size is going to be primary grid size dot x. It's going to be one for each. So I think that's it. So that'll be two. And otherwise, it's going to be primary grid size dot x plus one. Let's see if that's. Yeah, so it'll go two, three, and then two, three. I thought there should be more than that. Two, three, two, Three. Oh, this one, there's going to be three. There are going to be six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Primary, this one is going to be times two plus one. So it'll go two, three, two, three, two. I think that's the right amount. Um, well, we'll see. Um, I hope that I'm, I'm feeling like my internal thought process is hard to convey on the screen. So I'm hoping that I'm conveying it well. Um, if if the chat wants to say anything about like whether people are following along, that might be useful feedback for me. Um, anyway, so each one of these I'm going to be getting. So the line I care about is going to be lines y. 
And then for x is 0, x is less than equal uh, x size, x plus plus. Kim Gresson says, I'm following along perfectly. Great, I'm glad um, somebody is following along. OK, so for each of these, um, I'm going to try, I'm trying to get the, what carrot, like whether it's a, um, so why are there these dots here? Some weird autocomplete that Code Mirror is doing or something. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, so I've got this stuff going on, and let's. So y is going to be the line, and then x is going to be. I don't know if this was the best way to do it. I wonder if I should just have x go all the way and then like only do it if certain conditions are met. I think I might like that better. We'll see. Um, so what I'm thinking is like I get rid of this and I say x is going to range across the primary grid size dot x times 2 plus one, I guess. So I'm going to visit every single one of these intersections. And I'm only going to care about it if it's on like these checkerboard ones, which would mean if x plus y is odd, then it will be one of these ones I care about. So um, and I'll say if x plus y, x plus y percent to, so I'm going to say if it's even, then uh, continue, which will like just go to the next one. So now I just have these points. I'm going to make this a console.geometry. So yeah, so now um, these points, I wish you could see this better, but uh, it's here, here, here. So it's all these um, odd points. Great, okay, I think that's a better way of thinking about this. And then we'll say the character that I care about is gonna be uh, lines y and then x. Um, so sort of worked. Maybe I'll fill in the extra spaces here just so that it's maybe happier about these undefines. Can I read properties of undefined? Is that, are one of my lines not showing up? Let's say that I log x, y, and the character. Um, let's see, I have, uh, this is missing. No, still, still things that it doesn't like. Um, let's see, since I already got the line up here, I'll just say that.
Hmm. Um, maybe I'm doing too many or something. Uh, maybe these are supposed to be like that, actually. And then maybe I don't need this. I think that's better. But maybe I'll just leave this in here to be defensive. Um, all right, so this is, I think this is what I was going for. So the idea is that I'm visiting each one of these and then I'm getting the character out of it. So there's a horizontal break line here, a horizontal break line here. Now I'm onto this one. There's a vertical break line here. There's nothing here. And then there's a vertical break line here. This one, there's nothing, nothing, um, et cetera. So I'm gonna draw these on the canvas. To do that, we'll say if the character is a horizontal line, then um, I'm going to make some geometry that's going to be, mm, I guess we could say a path from points, it's it's always going to be two long, um, two units long. Um, so I do path from points vec minus one zero to vec one zero. And let's just Maybe I have to give this a style. Okay, so I'm making these things and I'm um, gonna be moving these to be at X, Y, maybe? Awesome. So these are now exactly where I want them. Um, I'm going to do the vertical case now. All right, um, so those are those lines, and then I should be able to like add. Ooh, why isn't that there? Uh, let's try this one. That works. Um, oh, I see, this is what I would have to do. So yeah, I can now uh, add these break lines in. Cool. Um, maybe there's one like that. Nope. Okay. So those are some break lines. Um, so this is, I like that it's ASCII art, but this is clearly not a great interface for putting in these break lines. I think what I want is to be able to like click and have them turn into horizontal or vertical break lines like that. Um, we can't do this right now in Cuddle, but that I think we should make it so that we can do that because that would be really fun to be able to like just adjust the break lines and then sort of see the whole woven pattern change. And that would be useful in like a lot of circumstances, I think, if we could have like components that were interactable on the canvas and you could like program how clicking on certain parts of the geometry would, would change the parameters or something like that. Um, we'll figure it out. Um, great, so we have these break lines. I'm about halfway through 
the time box I set for myself. So cool. So now that we have that, let's try to draw the, um, the next thing. So we've got sort of here, we're thinking about there's this grid and then we're gonna be drawing this skeleton. Um, and the idea is that, so if, so for each one of the grid, um, grid cells, we're going to be either drawing a um, diagonal line this way or this way if there were no break lines. So like in the case um, up here where there's like no break line surrounding these grids, you just get these um, diagonals. And then if there are break lines, then it sort of changes how the diagonal gets drawn. Um, and these are all of the cases for that. All right, so um, I'm gonna remove some of these console things. All right. So now we're gonna be doing, we wanna go through each of these grid, um, grid locations. And so let's do another nested for loop. So how many are there gonna be? So for each, so there's, this is, we're saying this is two and that means that there are four um, grid cells. So I think that's right. And then for each one, we need to, let's say, let's just assume that there aren't any break lines and we're just gonna draw the diagonals as a warm up. So um, the diagonals get drawn, um, I think whether the, you, you figure out whether the grid is even or odd and then you draw it one way for the even ones and the other way for the odd ones. So, um, we'll say if x plus y percent two equals zero, meaning the thing is even, we'll do one thing and otherwise we'll do it odd. Um, if it's even, I think we're gonna draw from here to there. Um, So there's going to be a point from here to here. Should I be? Yeah. Okay. So I'll just I'll just code that in. So um, this point is zero comma one, and then this other point is one comma zero. Um, I'm just gonna make this, what color does, is he using for these skeletons? Like sort of a purple. Uh, something like that. So those are all of, oh cool, already got it. So those are all of those points and then the other ones are gonna be sort of the other way. Uh, one comma zero to zero comma one. No. That's not what I wanted. Um, it's gonna be this, so that's zero, zero, and one, one. All right, and then, so that's the thing without 
dealing with the break lines. And then the idea is that because there's a break line here, it's not going to be going through. So it's going to be sort of like going like this. Uh, at least that's how, you know, how he has it drawn here. Like it, it basically like the purple stuff avoids the break lines. So we have to figure that out. So, all right. I think how I want to do it is for any grid cell, I want to know, is there a break line on the north and the east and the south or the west? I want to be able to ask that of the break lines data structure. Um, so, yeah. So is there a break line to the north? Maybe I'll say BN and BW, E, and S. Um, so to figure out if there's a break line to the north, I need to look at this line's data structure and see if it's, um, if it's a dash. So there's going to be, I know I'm just going to be getting, running into all sorts of like off by one bugs as I do this, but we'll just sort of power through. So let's see, this corresponds to here. So for zero, zero, I think I care about the zeroth line. And, um, and then I care about the, the first character. Uh, so it's not zero, uh, Y, and then like X plus one or something. And if that's equal to that, then there's a break line to the north. Uh, and then I'm going to say, if there's a break line to the north, we'll just not draw it. OK, that seems to be it. So this. All of these, there's, I've not drawn the, the thing to the north. And then I think it got it. OK, let's try the one to, I'm going to do the one to the south, I think, because I feel like it's pretty close to the same thing. Um, so if there's. So if I'm here and then I'm looking south, then I think I care about this one. So that's going to be y plus 1, and then maybe x. And I care if that's horizontal. Wow, I got it on the first try. OK. Cool. And now to the west. So here, if it's 0, I care about uh, man, I can't believe. Is that actually correct? Yeah, there's a break line to the south, and it's gotten them. OK. Um, to the west, I'm just going to like put in some stuff. Um, I have not thought about this at all. I'm just putting something in. Um, 
feel like I'm just getting lucky. I, I think it it's it's a little bit more complicated than this. Because now I've got these ones to the west, but not these. It should do this one also. I feel like I need to be looking at multiple things. I feel like I also need to care about... Um, so it's either that or... That maybe? I think that's actually what I want. And I think these, I just sort of got lucky and I need to be looking at other things. Um, let's see, can I omit these parentheses? Yeah. Um, I'll look at this again. So I didn't get this because these ones should have gone away also. So really I need to be doing this or it's like, I think, I think, I think I see it. So I think it's, it should be this. Ah, um, I think that's right. So, um, yeah, so basically like you care about the, which, which um, row it is, which is this, and then you can look sort of on either side and see if there's a break and then you get that. And I think that's, that's actually what we want. So then by symmetry, we can do, this one for the south and then we're getting this and this cool and then um so this will be another sort of symmetry thing except all of the x's will be x plus one one And that looks right. So everything with a break line to the east is now omitted. Okay. So I've gotten those. So then how do I route these things? Um, how do I express that in code? It's sort of like It's like you draw this and then if it's like touching a break line, you move it over by a half. Is that generic? So it's like if it's, if I drew a break line here, then this would get moved down by a half. If I drew a break line here, it would get moved to the left by a half. Um, something like that. You try and move it, and if it still touches, you move it to the other side or something is what Kim Gresson says. Yes, something like that, I think. So how should we code that? Um, it's like I've got these points and then I need to move them if they're touching. Okay, so let's say we have P1 and P2 and in this case P1, I'm just, um,
I'm just going to factor out some of this code. This is going to go down here. This is going to be from P1 to P2. In this case, P1 is going to be vec 0, 0. Um, what now? Okay. Um, okay, same thing. Factored out that, and now we're going to so. I think we can do, I'm going to start typing this, but I feel like there's going to be a better way to abstract it, but I'm just going to like sort of do it brute force. So if p1.x is zero and there is a break line to the west, then I need to move it over by a half. Then p1.x equals 0 0.5. Yes, that seems correct. So then anything that has something to the west is going to be moved over. Um, I think I have to do this for P2 also. Um, and I just don't have any. Let me add a break line here just to get something. Uh, on the other part of the grid. So to do that, where does it go? Here? Okay. Um, so this, for example, would also have to be moved over, but I'm not doing it because it's a P2, I guess, and so I have to have No. Oh, that's a. This will be a one, so that's going to move over there. Does this do anything? I'm pretty sure I need to have that, but I'm not finding a break line that's making it go. Um, well, whatever. I'll just have a bunch of break lines, and we'll see what happens. I think by symmetry, I'm pretty sure I need to have that. Um, okay, and then maybe we'll just do it for for the east. BW should be BE, should it? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I think that's looking like the right idea. And then I need to do this sort of for the Y stuff. Y, Y. And then this zero is up, I think, so that should be north and that should be south. Yeah, I think that's, I think we're doing it. I think we're doing this. And now it's getting to be like that. And if we remove break lines. That stuff is happening. Very cool. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like basically as far as I was hoping to get on this go round. And maybe that's, maybe that's a good stopping place for today. Um, 
because we have this thing where we can add and remove the brake lines and then that changes the skeleton and everything reroutes around the brake lines and then um, maybe next time we can do the next steps and the next steps would be um, there's a way to figure out um, whether they should go sort of all the way to the edge or if they should stop because the, the weaving is going to go underneath the other one. Um, and that's, I think that's actually really easy. It's just like whether it's even or odd um, determines sort of what, what happens in that case. So we can do that. And then the skeleton will be as if it's woven. And then um, the next part would be taking the skeleton like this and then drawing these curved um, like ribbons and having a, probably a parameter for the width of the ribbon. Uh, and then you end up with that. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're, we're halfway through. So I think I'm going to stop for today and maybe at some point I'll pick this up again and I guess I'll do another one of these impromptu sessions. Um, I will, uh, I'll publish this project. Uh, Celtic not work part one. Um, I'll write up a readme for it, but I'll, I'll publish this in case you want to look at it and I'll paste that in the chat. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll look at this again at some point in the future. Thanks for hanging out and for the feedback on this. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.